Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Pastor Charles Colbert, the lead pastor, the senior pastor of the Greater True Line Church, located in the heart of DeSoto, one of the best kept secret in DeSoto, Texas. I want to invite you every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. to our Sunday morning worship experience located at 538 Reunion Road in DeSoto. You can also join us every Sunday on our Facebook Live channel, the Greater True Vine DeSoto Facebook page. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel so every time we put up a new video, you'll be the first one to get it. And I can't wait to see you. And remember this, why settle for good when greater is available? God bless you. I can't wait to meet you. Hey, welcome in, everybody. This is your boy, Pastor Cobra, coming to you again for another night of Wednesday night in the Word. So glad that you tuned in tonight. Listen, I know there are thousands and millions of other things that you could be watching on your phone, your iPad, or whatever device that you are viewing right now, because there are so many other things on social media, but you took the time to log on tonight to hear this little old preacher to try to teach and preach the word of God, and I just thank you. I really do from the bottom of my heart, and I love you. I really do. And so, will you do me a favor tonight? Will you like and share uh, this broadcast tonight and call somebody or tag somebody that, that you feel like may need this word tonight? Because I believe tonight God's got a word for you. So, let's go ahead and get started. I want to talk about tonight the blessings of giving. Yeah, the blessing of giving. The, the distinction between tithing and giving needs to be explained. And I want to be clear on this. We believe that tithing is returning. We believe honestly that the first tenth, really truth be told, that the first of everything belongs to God. Now, who believes that out there? That, that, that's something that a person has to believe. You can't, you can't force that down nobody's throat. I believe that a person wakes up in the morning. Somehow, I don't believe that checking social media should be first. Not checking your text message on your phone. I think that a person ought to wake up in the morning saying, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Any believer, any believer, I think first thing out of your mouth should be thank you, Jesus. And when you feel yourself getting sleepy, now, this is old school. Lord, I thank you for another day. I'm, I'm serious. That's, that's the first thing on my mind. Lord, I thank you for letting me make it another day. Every day is a blessing. Now, who believes that out there? With that said, I want to talk about the blessings of giving tonight. So, so Paul makes uh, uh, these very powerful statements in Acts chapter 20. And, uh, and I want to give you our outline first tonight, and then we'll chase it the rest of the way. So let's sort of touch these four things that Paul lays out tonight, because pretty much through five or six verses, and then we'll, uh, we'll chase it, okay? Number one, uh, he talks about guard yourself and the church. Now, that's a challenge to leaders. So guard yourself and the church, he tells leaders. Then he challenges, feed the church of God. And then he challenges live for God and for God's word. Live for God and for God's word. And then finally, this whole idea of labor and give, not coveting worldly wealth. Not coveting. So now notice that it doesn't say not wanting worldly wealth or having some worldly wealth because you need some of that. And it's nothing wrong with having wealth. Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. There's nothing wrong with having wealth. But the caveat is coveting. Yeah, not coveting worldly wealth. And we'll touch, uh, we'll touch that and, and what that means, okay? So let's begin in uh, Acts, uh, begin at verse 28 and Acts 20, okay? You got it? It's on the screen. So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. See, some more ancient text says elders as leaders. So he said, guard yourself and God's people, feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, not your church, okay? His church. How did he purchase it? With money? No, with his own blood. The church was birthed out of Calvary, amen. When he shed his blood, 
the church was birthed out of him. Thank God for Jesus. This is, let me tell y'all something. This is the Lord's church for over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you. All leaders, everyone that's in leadership, pastor, the Holy Spirit did not appoint me. You appointed me, pastor. Well, hopefully he led me to see you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, there was an unction. The scripture says, lay hands on no man suddenly. The scripture said, know those who labor among you. So God, he trusted me to be prayerful and who I assigned to certain places. And there were times that I blew that. Yeah, and assigned the wrong people. And for that, I often apologize and accountable. I'm apologizing for because God says, be careful who you make a leader. Allow the Holy Spirit to pick leaders, amen? Okay, as a parenthetical, and allow the Holy Spirit to pick who you marry. Ooh, did I say that? Uh-oh. <laughs> so let's unpack that, all right? He said, so guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock. So this is a kind of challenge to leaders, and, and it's on me right now. I'm, I'm having a meeting almost every week with my men and, and with my leaders and, and my staff, and I'm loving it. I'm loving this idea of raising up leaders. And notice what he says, all you future leaders. And if you do anything in terms of guiding people, come on, here, you are a leader. If you're guiding any people here, you are a leader. And many of you are future leaders in ministry. So he says, number one, and I think this is critical, he says, and everybody misses it when it says, he says I want you to look at verse 28 because listen to what it says. It says, guard yourselves and God's people. Now, everybody skips right to God's people. Guard yourself. Sometimes how can you guard God's people if one has not guarded himself? Here's the question that worth asking. What does the word guard means right there in the text? Because is it the idea of a personal safety? Because it's crazy out here. Yeah, you better keep a pistol on you. You better keep a gun on you. It's crazy. So, so we know that's another kind of guarding. And that is a spiritual guard. Yeah, that, that is a guarding of one's heart. You know Proverbs 4.20, guard your heart. He says this is critical. Guard yourselves. So the question that I'm asking, what does he mean by guarding? We know it's a kind of spiritual guarding of one's spirit and one's value, one's ethic, one's behavior, one's spirituality and morality and how do you guard that pastor? Because I want to start guarding myself. It, it, it's not uh, rocket science. Through prayer and the word of God and obedience to that which you have read. See, if you have another answer, y'all, you let me know. Email your boy. Come on. Because I only know one way to guard myself. And that is through prayer and asking the Holy Spirit to guard my choices Asking the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom. Asking the Holy Spirit to give me the strength to say no to stuff and behavior that would harm me and hurt me. And because I can't do it, it on my own strength, according to Romans 7, that I must lean on the power of God because in myself dwells nothing good according to Romans 7. So God, you help me. Guard my heart. That, that's why I came to Bible study tonight. That's why I long, logged on to hear Pastor Colbert tonight because I need a word to help me guard myself. See, one person walked up to me with that look just mad, saying, I'm sick of it. Sick of what? I'm sick of me. <laughs> I'm thinking, I, I, I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah, I had a sister say, she said to me, she said, I'm sick of me, Pastor. 
I don't have no patience, Pastor. I'm thinking. I, I, I know the feeling, y'all. Amen. I know the feeling. She's like, I'm tired of going off on people. I'm tired of people allowing me to react or cause me to react based off of what they did. And I don't have the strength to tell myself what to do. And she was being real to me, saying everything around me is getting on my nerves, Pastor. And, and I'm sick of all of them. And I ain't got no patience, Pastor. I said, daughter, you know what? You sure don't. But he does. <laughs> you don't have it. But I tell you what, God does. And I said, daughter, the problem is that you're leaning on your own strength. Mm -hmm. And by nature, you're not patient. Yeah, see, some people, before they were saved, they were patient. Yeah, they were patient. I, 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 I want to get too heavy. I don't want to get too heavy here. But, but there are some natural giftings. And personalities. You, you ever met somebody that wasn't saved, but they were nicer than you? Mm -hmm. Come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. You like, man, he got more joy than me. That brother be happy. He ain't even saved, and I'm saved, but he, that brother right there be happy every Monday. He's an atheist. He's, he be happy. And I come in here saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I come in here mad than a mug every Monday. But this guy is an atheist, and he got more joy than I got. Here's something powerful that you're going to trip on if you are a thinker, okay? He may be nice, and he may be happy, but he got another issue. He may be a private killer because without God, something going to be wrong with you. Mm. Y'all hear what I said? I said, without God, something going to be wrong with you. There's going to be some area of deficiency that only God can fix. If not, people would know that they, would, that they need him. This is so good, y'all. This is so good. See, these, these are my victory stories. See, these are my victory stories. That's why I hug people. And that's why I was grieving during this pitiful pandemic because before this pandemic, I, I always hug people. I love hugging people. I like to know what you've been through and, I, and how you came out. Yeah, the following Sunday, daughter said, it's, it, it's working. <laughs> I said, I told you. I told you. Because Galatians 5 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, patience, uh, love. Here we go. Patience, that's what do it. Temperance, self-control. There, there's some more others uh, of there such there is no law. So in other words, God will give you those things. And you know what? Uh, type in the comment and say, y'all better be glad I got the Holy Ghost. Come on, you ought to tell your neighbor or somebody that's watching with you in your house, tell them you better be glad I got the Holy Ghost. But how many of y'all thank God for the Holy Ghost? Come on, give me some likes. Give me some hearts. Come on, come on. Yeah, thank God for the Holy Ghost. So type in the comment and say, guard yourself, guard yourself, guard yourself. How many people my age or older than me it was hard for you to guard yourself when you were young. How hard do you think it is for your grandchild? Mm. Let me tell you something that many older people don't consider. That it's harder for your child and your grandchildren than it was for you. Not economically, it's easier, okay? But morally, spiritually, yeah, the stuff that they got to deal with now, whoo, see, this will help you be more patient with young people. Because, see, when you was younger, there were certain things people didn't do when you was little. Yeah, stuff you didn't even see. Oh, oh, you managed. Oh, you was managed, okay? But, but people were still people. Yeah, a brother had to go all in the woods to a juke joint. Yeah, those my age, you had to go all behind the counter. All your son now need is a phone. I, I didn't have a phone when I was, like my, my children got, they got phones. See, you can always, when back then, you can hide. Yeah, but all your son need right now, a daughter, is a phone. And you gave it to him with internet. Y'all just missed that. Better guard them, pastor, but they going to sneak anyway. But let me tell you something. Let them sneak, but don't you turn them over. Y'all just missed the wisdom. Listen, to somebody, 
that has made mistakes and have learned to guard yourself. See, everybody here, watch what you watch. Watch what you do. Allow God's grace to keep you, okay? And then he says, let's read it, but then he says, guard yourself, okay? Verse 28 says, and guard the flock. Guard God's people and feed and shepherd God's flock. He's given me, okay? This is pastoral right here. This, he's given me this, this responsibility to guard. I'm very careful who I let preach here. Yeah, I, I really am. It, it's, it's a short rotation. If, if I don't like your life, you can't preach in here because I, I guard my people. They ain't got to be perfect, okay? There's nobody perfect. You ain't got to be perfect because the pastor is not perfect. But you got to be trying to be right, trying to live right, trying to do right, trying to be right to be trying to preach to my people. That's why I mean by guarding. I guard you, GTV. To the best of my ability. I'm going somewhere with this, okay? Now, look at verse 29. Let's just walk through the word. He says, I know that false teachers, like vicious wolves, will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Verse 30, even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. Yes, they will. <laughs> I learned that the hard way, too. That's true. He says, he says, false teachers, like vicious wolves, will come in. See, this is why I'm very careful who I put in leadership. Be careful who you appoint. Some people, hear me, have their own agenda. Yeah, that, that, that's called life. It's, it's going to happen. But he says, my job is to guard that. Vicious wolves, that's what he said, that will come from the outside. <laughs> Some people from the inside the church don't have pure motives either. The scripture called them wolves. Come on, will you just type in a comment and ask your neighbor, you're not a wolf, are you? <laughs> but, but I want you to catch this part because it's so apropos of where God has me right now. Because verse 31 says, 31, watch out. Remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you night and day and many and my many tears for you. He says the three years that I was with you, Paul uh, was the established chariot of the churches, not a pastor. See, your pastor, me, I'm a pastor. Your pastor is a pastor. I'm a shepherd in my heart. I'm not a perfect pastor. But you won't find many pastors that love their people as much as I do. I wish I was a better pastor talking about loving you. I, I, I'm a shepherd in my heart. I could be someplace preaching to uh, 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 hundreds of people. But I want to be here because I want you to catch this. Paul said, I've spent three years. Paul is an apostle. Paul sets up churches and then places people in churches like Timothy in the church and says, now you're the pastor. I'm now going to go to Corinth and go to Rome and go to Ephesus and establish some more churches. Why? Because Christianity at that time is in its infancy stage. The idea that Paul is preaching uh, in the first century means there is no Bible. That's, that's, that nothing is written till 50 years later. There's no New Testament. There's the Old Testament, but he's teaching about Christ. They have no book about it. He's teaching about uh, a Christ just from revelation and from God saying that I know you are traditional Jews, Judaism, but now Christ has come. So he spends three years indoctrinating them on the fact that Jesus is Lord now. Jesus died for you. In Christ, you have salvation. You're no longer under the Levitical law. You're no longer under the bondage of laws and regulation, but now you're free in Jesus. You're not going to heaven because of what you do. You're going to heaven because of what he did, that he gave his life. That's amazing grace. And then look what Paul says, everybody. He says three years. That, that's not that long, but that's not that short. And it jumped at me because there's a phrase that I'm getting ready to give the leaders here at GTV. Here it is. You ready? No shortcuts. <laughs> 
no shortcuts. Yeah, there are no shortcuts to intimacy and relationships. None, no, no. There, there are some places now you can shortcut. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, if you can get around it and save some time, but then there's some places you can't. Okay, what are those places, Pastor? Intimacy, intimacy relationships, and discipleship takes time. No shortcuts, no shortcuts. He says three years. I'm talking to people that want to be raised up in this church or in ministry or wherever you serve. We're going to touch everyone, and we're putting people in strategic places. I'm getting ready to raise up an army of men and millennials. I'm going to be busy every day, every Saturday. You know why? No shortcuts. See, to know me, you got to spend time with me to get my heart. You got to get my spirit. He said three years. See, discipleship is a process. I, I got to see who will stick and stay. Mm -hmm. See, some of you want everything to be short. See, have you ever met anybody who went to school for three weeks and say they have a bachelor's degree? <laughs> See, some of y'all have to get to a place where you say, God, I ain't looking for shortcuts. I want your will in my life. And if I got to fight through some stuff, see, if it takes me three years from today to get my money right, then let's get it going. If it takes me two years to win my wife's heart back, I'll spend that time. Come on, somebody type in the comment, no shortcuts. Come on, say no shortcuts. Okay, now watch this. Acts, Acts chapter 20. Verse 32, all right, here it is, the NLT says, and now I entrust you to God and the message of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. That is the catch code word at GTV. See, whenever you hear me say grace, <laughs> I need at least three amens right now. I need at least three amens on each row. If I say it twice, somebody ought to run. Whenever I say grace here at GTV, see, some words you can't sit on. <laughs> if you sit on it, I, I know you don't understand it because you can't hear the word grace as a believer. He says, I entrust you to his grace. Now, when I say grace, only people that don't feel grace are those who don't know about grace. But if you ever understand grace, the unmerited favor of God. See, grace means I get stuff that I don't deserve. Grace means that some kind of way I woke up this morning. Grace means that my son is good as a good boy when I was a bad woman. Come on. Grace means the Lord kept me when I should have been dead. I entrust you to his grace to everybody that's here that's watching me that has made mistakes in your life Shout for one word grace. God, I feel like having some church in here tonight. Come on, you ought to type in the comments and say grace, grace, grace. Come on, come on, grace, grace. Thank God for grace because, see, I'm only here because of God's grace. Paul says, I entrust you to his grace. I, 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 I think I'm going to do a series maybe sometime this winter, uh, this fall, about grace because I don't think that people fully understand uh, yeah, you fully understand that you don't have to beat yourself up about your past. You don't, baby. You ain't got to beat yourself up because, Pastor, Pastor Colbert, but I did it. I know you did it, but Grace said it's over. Oh, y'all ain't, ain't having church with me. Grace said give her another chance. By grace are you saved, lest any man should boast. But, Pastor, you don't understand. I done a lot of sinning in my life well where sin did abound God I wish I had some focus God, where sin did abound grace did what <laughs> okay so watch this because it's, it's crazy only he understands it <laughs> see the more you done the more grace you experience see this is why Jesus told the woman that was washing his feet and they said, why is she washing your feet when she's a tramp? <laughs> he said, he that has been forgiven much loves much. See, that's why you got radical worshipers in church. See, most of the people on your road when you come to church that's standing up used to be crazy. <laughs> 
See, that's why they up. <laughs> See, you sit in there, uh, don't move, don't say nothing when the preacher's up, when the choir, when the praise team up, you be you sit in there because you didn't do nothing that bad. But people that don't know how they got here, oh, don't know how they are alive and still alive with all the stuff they did, don't know how they haven't pulled all their hair out their head, don't know why they not dead. When they come in the church, when they come in here, they walk in like, whoa, thank you, Lord. I, I just want to know how many people, every time you step in the church, you like, it's on now. It's on now. Because as soon as church starts, I'm going to be up. As soon as Pastor Kobe say anything, because I can't believe grace. Hallelujah. Somebody say, grace, let me hug you. Grace, let me stand up. Grace woke me up. Grace picked me up. Grace is keeping me up. Grace, grace, grace. It wasn't your child. It was grace. You made it through cancer because of grace you're still married because of grace you don't have any diseases because of grace and if you got a disease and still alive it's grace you're not smoking that because of grace you survived him because of grace grace i think i'm gonna say it five times because i don't even care who like who like grace 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 five is a number of grace anyway grace Woo! God Almighty, every time somebody gives you a compliment, say, Grace, thank you. <laughs> Grace, yeah, that, that, that is so cute. Grace, thank you. Uh, your son is, 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 is so excellent. Grace, thank you. Thank you so much. Come on. You know what? You know what? Just take about 30 seconds and thank him right now. Thank God for everything he's done for you and say, Amazing Grace, everything I am. It's because of God's grace. All right, verse 35, and I bid you good night. Okay, verse 35 says, Acts 20, and I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. Now, let me back up for a minute. Boy, that's a boring term today. He says working hard. <laughs> Paul says, I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need. Pastor, I want to do more for people. This is about be this is about to be very spiritual. Uh, you ready? Type in a comment and tell your neighbor work, work. <laughs> I'm gonna work hard. I've been working hard for this ministry. Oh, when this pan even before this pandemic, but especially while we was in this pandemic and even after this pandemic, because church has changed. Work hard. He says, working hard. And then he says, and I bid you goodbye tonight. The B clause of that verse, it says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, come here thinking, people. Come here. Come here. He says, you should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. I, I got one question for my biblicists that is watching me online. Where did Jesus say that at? Because I don't see any particular text in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John that tells me Jesus says, I, I got to looking because Paul is credible. He's a credible witness. And Paul says, you should remember the words of Jesus. What did Jesus say? Jesus says, it is more blessed to give. And I'm like, where did he say that at? And then I understand that there are things that Christ said and did that are not recorded. Yeah, they are word of mouth down through generations. The scripture says there are many things not recorded that Jesus did. See, those of you who read the book of Revelation, it ends by saying many things and miracles were not recorded. Now, how many of you would like to know the unknown miracles? Yeah, he, he fed 5,000. We got that in the Bible. Maybe fed 30 with some baloney. I don't know. <laughs> Just miracles. The point I'm making, some place, Galilee, Mount Transfiguration, some place in the desert, maybe. He made the statement. Paul is a credible witness, everybody. Paul said he made the statement either through oral, uh, oral tradition or uh, it was passed down, but it's a fact. 
the scripture is true. Jesus said somewhere, even though it's not in the Bible, Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. It is more blessed. Say blessed. Type in blessed. Blessed. It is more blessed to give. Now, here's something that you got to get. The Bible does not say that it's not a blessing to receive. <laughs> see, I want you to see this with me because somatically, would you agree that it could say it's more of a blessing to give, not to receive? See, it could say that somatically, but, but, but it's a blessing to give, but not to receive. That's not what it says. It says it's more, mm, which denotes the idea that receiving is good, but giving is better. I got to let y'all go. See, the reason I teach that is because some people struggle in receiving based on your past and your pain. See, and everybody that did give had an agenda. Mm -hmm. Brothers, exes, whoever. What, what, what you mean uh, uh, you, 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 you're giving me this. What do you mean? You know, they don't know how to receive. What do you mean you're giving me this? What do you mean I can have this? No, no, I, I, I'll pay it. No, because you might want something back from me. Yeah, you too nice. <laughs> See, I used to have a hard time receiving. When somebody wanted to do stuff for me, come on. They, I, I, I used to have a hard time. And I remember somebody gave me something. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. But, but then I said, you know what? The Lord's Spirit hit me. He said, receive. Yeah. See, receive, receive, receive. Oh, my God. I got a word for somebody. People is about to start giving you stuff. See, some of y'all don't believe me, but I got a word for you. For you that are watching me right now, people are about to start giving you stuff. Yeah. What are you living right for? If you don't believe God will put you on somebody's mind, somebody's going to give you a house. I'm talking, I ain't talking to everybody. Some of you, a door going to open. Some of you, you're going to get a car. I know what I'm talking about. Somebody just gave, gave me a car a few years ago. Say, Pastor, the Lord told me that this ain't my car. This is your car. And gave it to me. Somebody, y'all ain't talking to me. And you ain't going to know where it came from. Somebody going to give you. Somebody going to leave you some money. How is it going to come to you unless God used somebody? Come on. Luke 6, 38 said, give and it shall be given. What? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men. Woo! You ought to type in the comments and tell your neighbor, ask your neighbor, are you one or should I wait for another? Go ahead. Come on. I got a feeling that my, oh, somebody about to get blessed and, 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 and what you need. And, and I want you to learn how to receive. Yeah. Because doors are about to be open in your life. Promotions are about to come to you. Yeah, anybody got grown kids out there? Give me some light. Give me some heart. One of them are going to buy you a house. Oh, you better hear the prophet tonight. Oh, I feel anointed tonight. One of them are going to pay your bills till you die. Oh, one of them are going to send you out of town. So one of them going to send you out on vacation, some cash money to spend on vacation. Come on, walk in that. It's, it, I'm in my receiving season. Let me tell you something. God has been blessing the people here at GTV. Oh, if I can tell you something is going on in the atmosphere, people are getting jobs and better jobs. They're getting raises and promotion. It's not a week go by that somebody's texting me or calling me and say, Pastor, guess what? Been testifying. My God, people are getting healed. See, it's my receiving season. Receive it. I had to make that point. As, my, as I make my final point. But it's not better than giving. <laughs> Somebody just say giving. It's not better. I love receiving, but it's not better than giving. Giving is the best feeling in the world. See, what's the biggest check you wrote for somebody else that wasn't a bill? Mm. It wasn't something that you had to do. Yeah, it wasn't for your car. Yeah, it wasn't for your house note or your car note. What is the biggest check that you and your spouse have ever written for another couple, mm, another person? 
I, I know that's relative to how much you make, but the one I wrote feel much better than the one I got. I, I want to leave you on this. Y'all catch that later. I'm saying that because I call them life-changing checks. Don't ask me how many have I written because I want the Lord to bless me when I get to heaven. I've gotten some checks, and it's not that I don't need them or want them. But, man, the ones that you write and the person that before you got there had no bed for their babies, they had no furniture for the living room, and one check now, they have some groceries. Come on. And God let you, he used you, come on, to bless them. Hear me, hear me. That's better than getting you a cute car or your hair done. Yeah, uh, that's better. Giving To help somebody. See, my wife and I, uh, I got us a, a, a house. No, no. But buy somebody else one if you want to be a boss. Y'all just missed that. <laughs> help somebody <laughs> with the down payment on a car. See, come on, y'all ain't talking to me. Come on, you see my glory, but you don't know my story. What you do in secret, God will reward you openly. The feeling is better. The Bible said it's more blessed to give. Only Christians can be happy about coming, giving some money away. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? I said only Christians, only believers can be happy about coming to church to give some money away. That's why your friends say uh, uh, you go to a cult. Yeah, you're in a cult. That, that's why your family member thinking you crazy, girl. You girl, you got your own bills and you giving all and you giving your tithe, you giving all this money to the church and, and this sacrificial giving. Come on. They don't know that you're not crazy. But she didn't call you crazy when you went to the club. She didn't call you crazy. And when you went and spent some money on some gin and juice and, and your cute fake gators. Come on. They didn't call you crazy when you all went in the club and, 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 and going to the and giving them all your money and all of that. Wasn't nobody crazy then. But since you done woke up and said, wait a minute. I got to store up treasures in heaven. We all going to leave here. That's a reality. 30 more years, but it could be tomorrow. So I'm laying up treasure. The Bible says, lay not up treasure where moth and robbers come in and steal and, and corrupt, but lay up your treasures in heaven. That's it. That's it. Oh, come on. I'm done. Let me give you the blessing of giving. Let me give you the blessing of giving, okay? Here it is. Number one, it honors God, okay? It honors God. Number two, it blesses others. Number three, it feels good. And number four, it comes back. <laughs> it's coming back. Somebody ought to receive that by faith. Everything that you give to God will come back to you. Good measure. Press down. Come on, give God some praise, everybody. I'm done. I'm done. I pray that you was blessed tonight, and I pray that you got a, a revelation of God's word tonight because I want to see you blessed. I want you to be blessed. But it is, a, it is blessed to give. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Hallelujah. I'm a living witness. Listen, if you need prayer tonight, if you want to more need more information on how to connect with us connect with this ministry call that number on the screen or shoot us an email okay and uh or if you need a prayer request come on you can call that number we'll pray for you we are a praying church as well as a giving church we believe in the power of prayer all right come on let's see then tonight let's give on tonight come on i know the holy spirit is pl plugging and pulling on your heart saying you know what you need to give. Come on. You need to give tonight. There are many ways to give. It's on the screen. And uh, I'm telling you, God will bless you. That's all I got. I don't have no tricks, no gimmicks, no game. I only can tell you what God would do. I only can tell you what the word says that God would do. Okay? All right. Well, join us this Sunday morning. Yes, this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We are <laughs> in church. So you're more than welcome to come in person. We are still following all CDC guidelines. 
and uh, 80, more than 80% of the church, we got our vaccination shot, but we still are masking up, and we're still praising God, and God has just been blessing us and showering on his presence, or you can continue to watch us online, virtually. Also, listen, I'm excited because July 11th, oh, our Walker and Greater Conference 2021 is on the way. It's vastly approaching. We have, this is our church conference that we have every year. Many lives have been impacted and touched and blessed. Many blessings and miracles have come out of this conference every time we had it. And last year, because of this pitiful pandemic, we weren't able to have our Walking in Greater conference. But this year, we're back. We're back. It's going to be a little different than it has been in the past. Yeah, there's no registration fees, but we do want you to register. We do want you to register. We have some special things that we want to do. It's free registration. Go online to our website, www.gtvchurch.com. Dot org. Click on events on the page and it will direct you to register. And uh, will you please do that? We have an awesome speaker for that Sunday night, Sunday afternoon at four, our afternoon worship celebration. None other than Superintendent Charles Jones from Fort Worth, Texas. What a mighty preacher, anointed preacher, anointed young man, a great pastor, great uh, father and husband. He will be our speaker for that evening. And then Monday, we'll close it out Monday with relationship talk. We have some various couples that are coming. Lady Cobra and I will host that night. And uh, we want you to send in your questions. Uh, we have a great panelist. Got some special guests coming. And so uh, if it's just not for couples only, anyone desiring to be married, you may be single, but you won't be single forever. And uh, you just want to grab some nuggets, uh, get some wisdom, and uh, see what have worked for uh, couples that have had a successful marriage, okay? All right. Well, remember this. Why settle for good when greater is available? God bless you. Can't wait to see you Sunday. Bye-bye.